Hello and welcome back to uh, issue uh, number 11 of our video tutorial series on uh, how to make airports for X-Plane. And um, this uh, video will be about placing vegetation. However, I think it's uh, time to look back a little bit at what we have accomplished. Uh, remember the last one was about uh, adding uh, prefabricated Lego brick objects and our little airport here is starting to look like an airport. And before I started this video, I uh, added everything that we've talked about so far. You can see the lines and everything. We have that already, but uh, I also added objects like these hangers. I added prefabricated hangers like this one and um, some facades like uh, this is the ground level of the terminal kit or over here I combined facades and objects. This object is the uh, the fire station and you can see what, what I didn't do is I didn't quality check my work yet and that's something that will happen to you as well. You'll just add stuff and then you fire up explain and you see oh man this road is really infringing here or uh, for example what I found out as um, I looked into these hangars. I did not put the asphalt far down enough that looks like there's a dirt or grass inside my hangars. So this is something that will happen to you again and again. You will uh, look, uh, fire up, explain, look in at your scenery. See here the roads, we'll get to that later. But um, you will look and see things that don't look right. For example, I added these uh, corrugated uh, hangers here, but unfortunately they come with this uh, sandy looking ground texture and obviously it doesn't look nice. So yeah, I guess I won't be able to use them here. I'll probably switch back. And you can see lots of uh, vegetation here of the autogen, also the autogen over here still infringing. That will be subject of a later video on uh, how we can clear that stuff. And also here, the cars I placed behind this makeshift uh, fire uh, station is not uh, there. They're on the on the street and that's not something that we want. So I'll go back uh, be, after I've done this video and uh, clean this stuff up a little bit. Also, um, I did place these uh, cars here on the parking lot pretty much exactly they are the way they are on the satellite picture but you can see it doesn't jibe with these roads this road should be going down here this is where the little gap is but it's not and um, the kind of like the the, uh, the the standing order for making uh, airports for the scenery gateway is leave the roads intact as much as possible even if it means uh, clearing out some of these uh, cars. The Julian and, and Lamina, they don't like it if objects are sitting in the road, so I'll have to get rid of these cars. Maybe just add four over here, maybe just six over here or so, so we'd stay clear of the road. Same thing over here, over here. It doesn't look quite as good as it would uh, look if the roads were exactly in the same, in the correct spots, and I could nuke the roads and just make them with asphalt texture but then we wouldn't have any autogen uh, or you know AI cars driving around here. And um, hopefully in a future iteration of x these roads will be a little better. And uh, then I can reinstate the uh, parked cars the way they should be. Now let's uh, go and uh, start looking at adding vegetation. There's uh, vegetation all over this planet and it really makes things uh, look organic and grown in. And uh, this airport here doesn't have that many trees, but there are some airports, small airports that are really close. They may be in the woods or they have uh, trees all over them. And I'll show you the options that we have in x -Plane. Now I'm going to close this one and we are going straight into wet and here we are. Now for you know, adding vegetation is, is again fairly straightforward. There are a couple options. Um, let's go through them in a row. The first thing that you can do is you can go to the library lib G10 and then there's an entry called forests and in the forests you have a bunch of objects and they start with the origin date palm and if you click on them and you know already the drill you get the little preview and the way it works for example trees you have origin tree one two three and four if you tilt this up you can see that the origin tree one doesn't have a horizontal pane it renders pretty fast it looks okay if you look from the side um okay-ish if you're 
far enough away but if you look straight down you won't see the tree so the autogen tree one is something that i don't use really close to where people will be uh, sitting or, or watching then you have the tree number two this one does have a horizontal paint you can see that and it looks like a little you know bulky round one three is a little elongated and four is again uh, a regular tree and you can see they all have variants and if you click on the variant you see that the tree kind of like stays the same but uh, the height changes it comes in different height variants so if you place the autogen tree four it will always look like this but it will come in different heights and if you click the autogen tree any you can see it has 16 variants it's basically all these four autogen trees four times four 16 you get all these variants and this makes adding a very diverse uh, range of trees let's say you want to put trees here and you can click 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 add a bunch of trees and they will all look a little different the preview is all like this but uh, if you later on look at them in explain they will uh, look all varied and um, I'm going to remove them again because you don't want to add many many trees like that there's a, a different option for that before I uh, jump to the next one again you have the the palm trees here the Mexican palm small medium you got the date palm which is a little longer the the 3d model here the this uh, texture model doesn't look too hot I know that and it looks uh, better the further you are away from it. I'm hoping that we'll get some replacement textures, but of course it's always a trade-off. If you get really nice trees and you render a million of them, the frame rate will go down and then there's uh, lots of crying about that too. So there's certainly some sort of middle ground that Lamina Research is uh, trying to get. And uh, you also have a object that is a row of palm trees which may come in handy if you want to like uh, place them along a street or so that saves you the work of clicking many many of these now the next uh, way to place vegetation is placing forests and you if you go uh, collapse this one and you open the g8 folder then you have all these forests in here you can see them by the ending dot four and you also get a preview if you click on that you can tilt that you see the maximum height that is will be available or will be attained by this forest and um, the, the way it works it's like uh, the, the nomenclature is like uh, you have the different climate zones you got the broad leaved ones and then you got cold you got hot you got uh, spars i think or, or semi whatever then you got temperate you got very cold very hot and so on and within all of these climate zones you have uh, dry rainy semi dry wet dry and so on so if you if you want to have broad leafed forest that is in growing in hot areas that has lots of rains you would pick this one for example and then it looks like this you can experiment with that and um, they're like coniferous trees and there are fruit trees that are like looking like little orchards and you got the mixed ones and of course uh, different orchards down here olive uh, trees all these things and um, there, there are quite a few wetland shrubbery those are you know fairly looking a little you know some some small ones in between and so on and uh, once you pick the one that you like you will probably start out with placing a few and then looking at them and explain to see which ones you like but uh, let's say we want to go with a broad hot dry then you can just place them like you would place any polygon you click 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 and then you have that area made of course the trees will not be growing exactly along these lines and if you want to have trees that grow exactly along a road like this then um, it's going to be tough with these polygons you want to not get too close because the trees may i don't think they'll be outside the polygon area but it looks pretty ragged and if you if if you do this if you want to have a clean line like this i usually or sometimes place some individual trees just along the line there's different fill modes you got the area fill mode you can see that over here you can switch to linear then it will be just like 
you know a line of trees and of course you get the points and if you have points then the trees will be uh, centered around the nodes and you get this little preview of what you're doing and I usually I use the area mode then you have the density and as I understand it it's I'm not sure it's documented anyway but I experimented with it and it goes between 0 and 1.0 so if you want half density you would go 0 0.5 you can see it's getting a little fainter the color to denote that you change the density one again is the densest one and um, if you want really really dense trees i think you could actually place two polygons on top of each other to make that a little more dense but one is usually fine and you also need to remember that you don't want to overload explain with uh, stuff that it needs to render remember all these trees they also cast shadows and uh, while the trees render pretty fast themselves just casting shadows is, is a lot of work for explain so i wouldn't go with uh, two polygons on top of each other just one is fine now if you w really want to recreate the area that your um, airport is sitting on let's say you want to you know this this is pretty distinctive people that fly here they would probably know yeah there's you know around where you touch down there's a little forest that protrudes into the uh, area of the airport and you can certainly go for that you go for maybe the broad hot wet which would be representative for uh, this area here North Carolina and you can maybe go like this and then you can say I want to go like this like this and if you if you looked at the the way the uh, whole thing works then you know that uh, there is lots of forest around this airport so I you know you don't have to make the forest for the whole state just make the forest big enough so that it actually attaches to your um, to the, the forest that is already there because when later on when we place exclusion zones what happens is you will want to exclude all the trees in an area around or you know from from your airport and um, when we make exclusion zones they can't be shaped like the airport they have to be rectangular so you will be nuking some forest that's already there and by placing these forest polygons you can basically put the forest back to where it should be so you don't have uh, an outline of um, where you know where the trees were cleared by you placing an exclusion zone and again i'm trying to stay away here from the from the road a little bit maybe go like this and then you see we get a nice area where the where the whole airport is uh, you know hemmed in by by trees and this little area here this is something probably too thin for a forest polygon uh, so i'm going to leave that later on and i would just uh, place this polygon along the road here leaving a good distance from it because um, we don't know if the road is exactly in the same spot in explain that's something that you will have to check later on when you look at your uh, work in explain and then um, you can see if it's actually that way or if the road is maybe simplified and just cuts through that little forest that we just placed this is a little trial and error work and here we can uh, maybe put some trees i'm just picking the autogen tree four and i would maybe put some trees right here to get the the look of these trees as you come into land and um, I checked that before the forest is growing right right to the edge over here and this is probably something that you can barely clear when you approach the the uh, the runway it's that way on a lot of airports and explain where you just clip the trees as you come in even on a perfect glide slope certainly we don't want that so you would place these trees here and then later look at your handiwork in explain there's a little area of trees over here that you can mimic again maybe uh, switching the the type of trees a little bit in between to make them not all look exactly the same even if they have a different height and then we have some trees here that um, are growing i'll i just tend to tentatively place some trees but um, looking at the way the road network is that's probably something that we want to uh, 
carefully double check in X plane because we don't want any trees sitting on the road. Some over here, and then maybe we would go again for the broad, hot, wet, and bring that area in over here. Make this one. So I usually I, I fashion all the uh, forest patches that are really adjacent to the airport manually, and then I can clear uh, out liberally later on with my exclusion zones and not worry about cutting off uh, any forests that are close to the airport. Well, this is almost it. There's one more uh, piece of vegetation that you can place. I'm really hoping that Lamina will add more in the future, bushes and maybe flower beds, uh, all these little things that sit around the FBO, maybe make, make things look nice as you taxi up. But there's one more thing that you can add, and that is the hedge. If you type in hedge, in the search filter up here, you can see under constructions and fencing, you have a couple uh, hedges. And if you uh, look at the preview, whoops, missed that one over here, the preview down here, you can see that this facade has one type and that is the wall number one and that's a hedge. You get this one, get this one. They're fixed in height, 1.6 meters. This one is two meters in height. This one also two meters, and then you have the fence hedge small, which is only one meter. And if you if you look at it, you can see if you tilt this down, that it is just oops, kind of hard to see, but it's it's just you know it's it's super thin. It's uh, it's not like a real hedge. So if you uh, place the hedge far away from where people are sitting to look at it then it's fine to place it like this but if you do want to make a hedge that is close to uh, the camera then sometimes I, I i try to make it look maybe like this where i create this sort of three-dimensional little thing now here's a, some, something special if you if you close the facade the last section will go away. It, this uh, used to be like that with lots of facades. I think it's a little bug. They haven't cleaned that out for this type. So if you want to close that, just add a node, then take this node, drag it over here, and then you have this little closed sort of looking uh, hedge. Now, if you look at it from above, you will still see the ground right here in between. But if you look at it at a slanted angle, it looks more three-dimensional. You can see the little yardstick down here. It's maybe 30 centimeters wide, uh, maybe a little more. And um, it does look kind of three-dimensional as long as you don't sit right above it and look look down straight down. Otherwise, especially if you look at it from over here, it has a little uh, bulk to it. So this is what I would do. Uh, placing hedges, they look pretty, uh, well, you know, really straight, but they're better than nothing. And I thought I'd mention that uh, if you want to add a hedge, that's what you want to do. Okay, um, I'll be adding some vegetation. And uh, actually, you know, what we'll do is I'll export this. Uh, I'm not going to put all this stuff into, well, what I usually do is I uh, make a special folder just for vegetation and I put of course the forests and the hedges and everything in there. So let's let's do this. Hold down shift mark control G to make a folder, call it vegetation and go back up, collapse the folder. Now drag the folder into my airport. I'm going to save it. I'm going to export the scenery pack of course i still have this one uh, here that's it's not supposed to be there but anyway i'll cut this out now as i load the um, airport and we'll look at it and here we are back in the cockpit hit c to get to the free camera and let's look at those trees that we added we'll start out over here you can see here's the little hedge that we placed and as i said it does look a little three-dimensional well, if you look straight down, you can see it's just two facades, basically. But, you know, hey, it's better than nothing. And uh, here's our tree. Of course, it looks dumb if you uh, really sit close to it. But if you just, uh, you know, look at it from this distance as you do your traffic patterns, they don't look so bad. And we're lucky. We, we missed all the streets. So I guess they can just stay there. Now, um, this is that little erroneous patch that we placed. We'll get clear that out later but you can see these trees here that we added they look okay and uh, this little area here is, an, is all right and um, this 
street is actually a railroad and we got close with some of these trees but not too close the cars can still go on it and be fine and over here this is the little line that we added uh, trees on the approach and and uh, if you look over here they are in here interspersed with these default trees and you can see the default trees as i said this is uh you see too white too red this is where we would be coming in and this is way too close to these trees so we're going to nuke this uh this default forest so to say and just live with that little line of trees that we uh, put here and uh, it makes landing less exciting which many of you may think is bad but uh, the real pilots think landings that are boring are just the way we like them and um, over here we also added trees and you can see the the forest that we added blends in really well with the with the forest that's been there before basically it's it's hard to really distinguish where one type changes to the other so i think we did pick the right one and um, now we have correct tree lines around a forest and this concludes video number 11 and uh, we'll go to 12 in just a little bit.